Unlock phone. All right. Play message from Xavier. Hey man, I'm wanting to head back to Namibia to film a documentary to raise awareness for the Himba people. They have no water and they need help. What the? Come join me. Prepare Whoa. for jump. <laughs> Catastrophic depressurization imminent. Hey, Sean. Hey, Xavier. You need a jacket, man. Thanks, man. Be more stylish. The movie. Is This is Xavier. He's a buddy of mine and a photographer who recently spent some time with the Himba people. He wanted us to go back to try and capture the issues that they're having with water so that we can raise some funds for them. He even lets me touch his Hasselblad. Sean, uh, you asked me yesterday how it feels to work with the Hasselblad. Um, it's quite an indescribable feeling. It's like having the Ferraris of cameras. It's like your childhood dream to own one of these babies. And uh, I want you to see it. So I want you to see how the world looks through the the the, the eye lens or the eyepiece. So, just look at the. It feels like Apollo 13. Yes, very much. It was kind of. It was the first camera that went to the moon. You see, <laughs> it looks pretty amazing. So Cue dramatic music. In order to truly understand what it's like to live a life with little to no water, we spent a few days with the Himba people. They opened up their homes and their hearts to us. So please, do give the documentary in the links below a watch, so that you can learn more about the Himba people and what you can do to help. Of course, spending a lot of time with people means you're going to learn a lot about them and a lot from them. But this is pretty much useless when you can't speak the language. That's where this crazy guy on the right comes in. His name's John and he's also a Himba. But he spends most of his time outside of the villages, trying to raise awareness and to preserve these tribes. He always talks about the Himba sense of community. And it's so easy to see when you're, you're around them. They're always laughing and joking with each other, always helping. Kind of the exact opposite of what I see back home, you know, sitting in traffic. Although we did have traffic. I swear to God that goat said hello. <laughs> yeah, they're going. Bye. They didn't seem to like my non-dairy milk either. When I made for them oats, they said, um, what did we put in? Is it milk or water? And this is honestly, it's not actually milk. It's soy, soy milk. It's not milk from cow. This is what happens when you're filming in the desert, huh? Being in the middle of nowhere and trying to film a documentary had its difficulties. That was one day of driving through the desert. Every item you own is just full of dirt, <laughs> full of sand. Not to mention every hole in your oh, body. Man. The heat was also out to kill us. Hot as fuck. 37 degrees. It is scorching hot. As, as soon as you kind of come out of a shade, it just, you can feel it on your skin. It starts tingling. It's like tingling. My, my it's like a slap. Bah. And, um, and for a pale ale like me, this is, this is not my natural habitat. Yeah. Definitely not. So during daylight, we'd spend traveling and filming. During the night, we'd just sit in the dark, back up footage, charge batteries, and well, Xavier tried to cook us dinner. When the people cook, they pray before they eat. When I cook, people pray after. However, it seems like Xavier's biggest issue was with something a lot smaller. That was the best interview I've ever filmed. <laughs> See, seeing you struggle. <laughs> so now, now. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah. I can't do that. I can't fucking do this. Look how many fucking mosquitoes are on me. 
It's actually, it's so loud in my ears right now. I just hear See how many flies, because you seem to be okay with the flies. I, I get don't. a good shot. <laughs> you got to sacrifice it for the good shot. I have to put a lot in What's <laughs> I feel like a dead person, man. Like, just you know, flies fucking around me. You know, as soon as you stood still, you just had hundreds of these flies that surround your face and your eyes. It wasn't ideal. This is our lovely home. 2.4 litre Toyota Hilux. The best thing I've ever driven. So that's where we're going, guys. Alright, so we've done this already. My oh, baby, you can do this. Can you? Yes, I can. It's called a Hilux for a reason, not a Lolux. After filming our documentary, we had a few days to burn in Namibia. We thought we'd take this monster car of ours through the roughest terrain we could find on the way to Sources Flay. No main roads, just fun. And we are gonna do it the fun way, exciting way, the adventure way. Just gonna go in the middle of nowhere. And, and just, just us in the desert and a 4x4 four four and whatever happens, adventure! <laughs> It's a pity that none of us had thought about high speed gravel roads and, you know, tire pressure. So this meant we had a blowout in the middle of nowhere. We were so far in the middle of nowhere that we thought it would be funny to change this tire without shirts on, but with ties on. We soon realized with the sun setting that we had no idea how to change this tire. But we got lucky with some strangers coming past. They helped us change the tire. We gave them a couple of beers and we were on our way. Of course, we also had to rely on our own two legs during the filming of this documentary. You know, while walking with the locals on their short trips to the watering hole. And I say short in inverted commas. We walked a lot, every day, all the time. A highlight from one of these walks would have been meeting this dog. You've never seen a white man before. <laughs> what is going on now at the moment? You can see the, the dog is barking. <laughs> the dog have never seen any white people here. <laughs> so he's afraid. He's like, oh, what is this? This is a, this is a new, two, new ghost. <laughs> we finally get to the most beautiful place I've ever been to with these dunes behind me. And I lose my phone, so I can't do any drone shots. Fuck. Luckily, later on that night, I did find my phone. It was underneath a pile of sand in our campsite. So while you enjoy this beautiful footage of the sunrise in Namibia, I'll ask you one more time. Please go and watch the documentary. The Himba people need your help.